Testing, testing, one, two, three. Is this mic on? Testing, one, two, three. Oh, it is Eclipse Day, isn't it? How you doing, Robert? It's too bad we won't really get much of a view here, where I'm at, huh? How are you doing, brother? Can you hear me all right? I just want to make sure the mic's coming through and you can hear the music lightly in the background. You're in the path of totality, lucky. Yeah, I'd basically have to travel to do that and I'm not much for traveling nowadays. Perfect. Perfect. I will be right back, my friend. Thank you for helping me with the sound checks. Stand by. We will be starting in about eight and a half minutes. I'm just going to do last minute uh, video and audio checks. The weather's nice. Nice. I heard there would be there was worry about rain and clouds and stuff. For the eclipse. Make sure that your uh, your uh, your sun, your glasses are coated in pure eclipsium. It's a joke. Don't don't stress that. Nice. Well, I'll be right back. All right. I'm gonna play around with the settings here.
<clears throat> Sorry for the minor delay. I had a uh, phone call come in that was somewhat important that I could not ignore, and I had to take it, so I rushed the call. How's everyone doing this morning? Welcome, welcome to another installment of Mapmaker Monday. I know this is your favorite place to be on Monday, right? Because, you know, it's obviously the best day of the week. <laughs> My name is Mac. I'm the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. You are tuned into the official Dungeon Alchemist stream wherever you happen to be watching, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Kick, Trovo, etc. I appreciate you all being here and supporting. <laughs> Hello, KO'd. <laughs> community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. It's funny. So, I hope everyone's doing well. Hope you had an amazing weekend. Uh, on today's uh, very lovely installment of Mapmaker Monday, I will be continuing work on the Damn Challenge Gallery. For those that aren't aware, um, basically, 
I every Monday I do a live build using Dungeon Alchemist so you can watch and follow along as I build a map in real time. This map has been a rather ambitious project. It is a living monument, a gallery, showcasing every single map that has won the Dam Challenge. Every one of these rooms is a little bit, uh, like a little... Yeah, right? Whose bright idea was this anyway? It's almost done, actually. I'm down to the last six rooms. So, uh, and I have a few spares for some room to grow. Be putting on some finishing touches, like uh, little things like these uh, plaques here in the front. That is a QR code to the uh, Steam Workshop page of the uh, map, so you can open it up and subscribe. And uh, dinner and a show. You know, title there is of the map, and then the creator. That could be a pretty cool idea, too. Like, it just teleports you to kind of Blue's Clues style KO'd, right? You got a skadoo, if you will. And uh, skadoo into a painting. It would be rather cool. Would be rather cool indeed. So, um, yeah, this is your, yours and Seisu's there, you can see, the, uh, the DK mine map. But yeah, anyone who's won a damn challenge, their map is going to be featured in here. And it essentially is a big museum. So what's in a museum? You usually have like an information or a ticket booth, right? Where you can get like pamphlets and pay to get in. There's usually maps that are like, you are here. When the whole map is done, I'm going to export a top down and put them on these. Um, <laughs> Mega Dungeon? Mega Dungeon! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Robert, I know you want that so bad. So basically, each of these rooms showcases a winner. And it alternates in color, and like each room is a little bit different than the than the next, just because the paintings are unique to the individual map, and I picked assets from each map to kind of showcase that map. So as you go through each of them, they're all kind of a little like living tribute to the the winner. Anyway, let's uh, let's proceed. I plan to expand upon this a little bit. I think I'm going to put like a food stand here, like a little concession booth. And then maybe a stage or something back here. I don't know. There will be roughly three or four rooms extra when all said and done. So maybe the stage is kind of meh. Because I might have to expand eventually. The good thing is, is once I'm all caught up, I'll only need to do like one room every like few weeks, right? Or two rooms a month. How do, how would I make a stage? I would probably just take like a, you know, one of the wooden platforms that we offer. There's quite a few different ones. There's actually one that's called a stage. Probably just stretch this bad boy and sink it. Something like that. <clears throat> a really simple stage if I wanted to or I could make one by hand using like platforms like these and just kind of sink it into the ground so I could drop it down like this and then once I have it at the height I want then just kind of hold can uh, shift as I place them and they'll snap into place oops So the shift rapidly duplicates the object, and uh, I lowered it into the ground so it replicates what it was based off of. Either one works. It's just like a, a potential idea. That or maybe like a pedestal. We have some stone pedestals that work great for a stage. Um, where in the stone work? Like these these um 
like these. A dais. These can work as a stage, too. Make it a little bigger. It's kind of like a like an amphitheater or something, but I guess indoor. So we got a few options. I can surely improvise. <clears throat> anyway, so first thing we're going to do today is finish up some touches on this room. This is going to be one of the only rooms where the map is stretched across two parchments. So I'm going to have to do that offline in Photoshop where I cut the map into two slices and put it on here, each one. Because typically each room only needs one map, but this is a very long, long map. So, first thing I'm going to do is I wanted to represent this map uh, accurately, which it's a DK mine, Donkey Kong mine. That little logo there looks pretty good. Right, Matt? I knew someone would say it. How you doing, Morgrim? Welcome, welcome. Hey, uh, KO'd, are you still here by chance? Could you send me the uh, the boom symbol of for the barrel too? Because I'm thinking now that, you know, from a community standpoint, that maybe using a Nintendo franchise logo somewhere big is a bad idea. That was it, huh? Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, let's try it. So I'm going to place an image on this, but how I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a customizable round wall. Everyone's like, Mac, how do you, what's, what are you talking about? That won't work. So these bad boys are customizable. You can insert images into them. Oh no, I lost it. Got it. Looks pretty good. I like it. How you doing, Will? Alrighty, so this room is pretty much done other than the map and the exterior label, which I will do on my own time because that requires some photo editing and I don't want to do that on stream. So <clears throat> I'm going to open the next map in sequence here, which would be the Wizard's Mind Retreat by Hieronimo. And this is probably one of the most beautiful maps I've ever seen. <clears throat> The image is actually saved as part of the map. You can't do a link or a hyperlink. It's it's a, it, the JPEG or PNG is part of the map. And it actually increases the map by that size. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. A bit of a sore throat this morning. I'm a little sick this weekend. So just reading this. A safe place for a troubled wizard's mind, where there are things that give him a feeling of security and tangibility. If one would use this map, there are two ladders on the front to get to the levitating stepstone books. Now I see this, the mind retreat, a wizard's respite, 
if you will. Um, maybe like a pocket dimension where he stores his most prized, you know, uh, books and tomes and other stuff and he can relax. I wonder if Hieronimo's here at the moment. I don't think so. But that is not important. This map is still amazing regardless. I just was hoping to get some of his insight. When you look at this map, though, I mean, a lot went into making this. There's some verticality here, a lot of hand placement of these various books. Um, and then lastly, the, the, the comfy little bed. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I feel the most comfiest when I'm in my Right? Like, pretty much the only, the second most comfy place would be my couch. <clears throat> so, Morgrim on Twitch just asked, Question for you. Underwater maps. Possible? Looking into doing a campaign with a lot of merfolk and interaction. So, there's two methods for underwater maps at the moment in Dungeon Alchemist. And I will tell you that, uh, basically, sternly, that we have two updates planned in the future that are centered solely around water and water-based features. One is called Water Worlds. That'll be like, you know, waterfalls, gyres, little, uh, different water effects, you know, water at different levels, etc. Um, that, you know, is ETA is really not set in stone right now. We really only know one update at a time. So the other one is called High Seas, and that will be a focus on, you know, sh uh, docks and ships and open seas. So with those two in mind, a lot of water stuff is on the horizon for Dungeon Alchemist, but it's, it's down the road. Um, that's not to kick the can, so, so to speak. You can definitely make underwater maps. It's possible, and people have done it. But it takes a little bit of, uh, like, trickery. You either have to get clever with immersion um, by adjusting lighting to make it feel like you're underwater, which some maps have done a very good job at that, and I'll show you one after we take a look at this and take all the screenshots we need from it. Um, there are others where people actually, you know, put water and put things in the water, such as objects or... Um, you know, essentially building what would be like an underwater structure using structural objects, placing them inside water. Um, so you could have a, a map, you know, just covered in water and then put things under it or, you know, try and... You would essentially use the terrain tool to sink the ground down to make it deeper under the water and then put structures there. So they would be just under the surface. It wouldn't be like an ultra deep thing there. So that would either be like, you know, maybe a sunken civilization, or maybe you could emulate that it's an underwater uh, uh, civilization. The best way, in my opinion, is to use light. If you go into the light panel um, and adjust the lighting, this one isn't a great example because there's so much gold on it. You know what? I'm just going to show you. There is an amazing map that, that does this to a, a great extent. This one here is great because it uses lighting to simulate like you're in water, right? So imagine all this is underwater. Just tell your players this is underwater. I mean, they suspend their disbelief when they're casting Fireball. That's not really them doing it, is it? So I think to a degree using their imagination is part of, you know, them accepting this is underwater. Now, there is another map that does this pretty well too. Probably one of my favorite underwater maps, and it's the Savvy Seahorse Tavern. Which is an underwater tavern that allows you to, you know, ride seahorses out in the, the ocean. Because, you know, alcohol and riding seahorses in the ocean seems like a really powerful mix. While we're downloading this, I'm just going to run a short ad, but it's our ad. It's not a Twitch ad or anything like that. And it's an ad that I put a lot of love and care into. I actually 
pitched the ad and helped write the script and the concept for it. And I networked this whole relationship with this company who shot the ad for us. You may be familiar with Deerstalker Pictures or One for All. Anyway, enjoy. You stand before the long, dark road to the fabled realm of Doyakta and the four. What do we see? I don't know. Uh, a goblin. I kill him. But before she does, I uh, give you my fur. Demand to know the goblin's name. Uh, uh, hi, my name is Woblin. <laughs> Where do you live there, Woblin? I don't think that's relevant. Well, but I, Gilliam of Firth, demand to seek the goblins of old. Clever, find family, kill entire bloodline. I like it. Seriously, we're doing this? Yeah, well, I won't be needing that anymore, will I? Ever get caught by your players with your pants down? Dungeon Alchemist lets you create wonderful maps for any encounter in seconds. Oh, Woblin, that's a very impressive uh, cheese collection you've got there. Yeah, it is quite impressive, yes. But you know what's more impressive? This map I have to the fabled realm of Goyak Tar. Please take it and leave. Close it all behind you. Mr. Woblin, I cannot help but notice that you have a secret tunnel underneath your cabinet. Get to explain. Download Dungeon Alchemist, the AI powered map maker, on Steam today. All right, I'm back. Sorry for the. Uh... The shameless promotion on our dedicated Dungeon Alchemist stream. <laughs> so this map is thematically set underwater. And the creator was very clever in like setting scenes where it felt like you were looking out into an underwater scape. Or various, you know, underwater-esque biome-ish things. Looks very cool. The lighting helps tremendously, right? Can't go through the portal. I mean, it's a game of imagination, so I hope your players will, will buy into the fact that they're underwater. What is everyone's thoughts on this map? By the way, I'm gonna open up Wizard's Mind Retreat so we can take pictures. It is a neat concept, right? And it's a pretty much just a normal map on sand and the light filter is set to teal. That's it. Pretty much any map you want, you can add this light filter and say, hey, this is underwater. So just draw some sand, put some structures on it, change the light, and you're good to go. Um, give me one minute. I'll export some pictures of this map, and then I'll show you what I mean. Bit of a ache in my shoulder here. Like a knot or something. Hmm. It's driving me a little crazy, I'm trying to like relax and stream, but I can't. I can't sit still and relax. It's always like it can be fidget, like a little bit of a struggle bus, but I'll deal. Okay, wizards, mind retreat. Yeah, it, it, it's probably that. Probably a little bit. Okay, so... Save the map. Got that. Now I just need a couple cool scenic shots. Uh, 
I think this shot of the bed looks pretty good. I'm thinking one of these books, just an open book, is definitely one of the displays. I need help picking another display. What should be the second display? Okay, see you, Seisu. Need one more picture. That looks pretty cool. Got like the little planets around it and stuff. What I'm gonna do though. We'll change the lighting to dark, right? And that will complement the camera a little bit more. Because then there won't be a bright sun directly behind what I'm shooting. If anything, it'll be the night sky and it'll look so much better. Man, getting a shot with that with the moon, though, is pretty epic. If you can get a moon shot, I always recommend it because, oh my goodness. Hey, Caillou, how you doing, buddy? So, yeah, I think I'm going to do this chest here and put, like, a couple planets around it, and then I'm going to do a book. Those will be the items for this map. I could do the bed, but the bed's really big. It won't fit easily. Okay, so now that we've gotten some images from this map and an idea of what we're going to use for the, dark, uh, the damn challenge gallery, I'm going to show our friend here how to make an underwater immersion set up here we're going to do a flat dune we're going to do no vegetation i mean you could do vegetation but oasis and cacti aren't really uh, conducive to underwater vegetation so i just leave it blank weather is none and uh i guess we could just do it at mountain tops no let's do it at water level that way you can put up water above Wait, what yeah we'll figure it out we'll figure it out Anyway, weather, bubbles, weather, rain. So now we have a flat pla a plane of dunes, right? This is just sand. And you could shape this and add some life to it if you want. Uh, you can pan around it and kind of bubble it out. You could even generate it as dunes so it's not so flat. Um, but that's just personal preference. Now... Ultimately, because we're adding water that's going to negate that, it will be underneath it at some point. It's going to make this brush really big and really strong. Yep, that's why you wanted mountaintop. Okay, I remember now. One second. I need to regenerate this map. Made a simple mistake. The room... No, room placement won't matter. We want it at water level. That's right. Under the sea. Under the sea. So what I did is I added a little bit of water first, and then I cut away. And now it's just turning all into water. And there's Playa under here, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so you could just paint it back into sand. I don't know why the bottom of the sand is Playa, but yeah. Anyway. And now, as you can see, as I extend this, I mean, I could extend this and have like a little bit of beach present, and the rest could be all underwater. Now, your AI won't be able to draw like buildings underwater. It'll always generate them above. So if you're going to want to use AI, that's not going to work. You're going to need to build by hand. So you dive into objects and go to structural and play around with these objects to see if anything will fit your needs. Or you can go into the workshop and browse assets. Now in the workshop, there's 
thousands, over 3,000 models of uh, 3D models that are free to download. Many of or are organized into collections, which save you time. So you can download like village pieces or, you know, uh, homes and then just place them underwater. I mean, ultimately, it's up to you. But if it were me in your situation, you know, you could either approach it as like ruins underwater by putting like structures, masonry, broken walls, etc. underground. We have like round constructions and towers and things like this that when you place them down here, it kind of looks like there used to be something important there, right? Up in the sun, they work all day. Yeah. No, I actually sang that for the talent show years ago. Like, probably first or second grade. Now, in our next update, I'm just going to let you know, you'll be able to generate structures at any height. And I'm pretty sure that means underwater. So, when, you, when our new update launches, which is titled Magic, you'll be able to draw an AI room, say like this. And before you generate it, you can rotate it, you can raise it up and down, and you can reshape the room. There'll be little nodules, little like bumps on the ends here that you can reshape. In fact, I'll just show you some video of this so you can see it in action. Let me show you raising rooms up and down first. And then we'll... I will say this, we're doing a lot of internal testing right now and we're getting closer and closer. The devs are putting together some last minute finishing touches on the build. Um, but there really isn't a launch date or even a window yet that we can succinctly promise. Uh, if anything, I would say we're looking closer to the end of this month, leaning into next month is a more optimized thing and it could easily go into next month, you know, so could you know be the end of next month for all we know so let's just you know be cautious optimistically cautious cautiously optimistic is that how you say it and uh hope for the best um and then when news is rel uh, is available i'll be able to share it so here you see the ability to raise up structures or sink them down before generating. So imagine if there was water here that would generate down in the water, allowing you to quickly make an underwater map. This will speed up that process tremendously on the AI side. And you can use the structure here instead of the hundreds of thousands of structural objects to make things by hand. Um, you'll also be able to rotate them. I really like this teaser. I've also been given permission to start sharing more teasers, which is good. But my current build that I'm in is kind of scuffed. It doesn't work very well because it's like an early alpha build. So when I'm shooting content, a lot of times it'll either crash or the content is broken. Like half working objects and visible textures and surfaces. And it's just because, you know, we're actively developing it. It's not necessarily a solid build. So as you can see here, there's a lot of things that'll be joining in this update that will improve your ability to generate all sorts of structures and uh, be able to replicate existing, you know, maps with fine precision because you'll be able to make all sorts of shapes, rotate them, move them around, uh, and put them at different heights. As you can see here, he even we even moved the room before generation, which is impressive. So there's a lot of new cool stuff on the horizon. Uh, Roan, actually today is Map Maker Monday and I'm focusing on uh, building a map today. I guess I could take a quick glance. That wouldn't be too, too painful, huh? Let me show y'all uh, one last teaser and then we'll, we'll pull up the map. But on Map Maker Monday, I usually focus on building maps. I do share teasers, and then I also provide support 
on Saturday streams, um, every other Saturday, we do a map and asset showcase called the Dam Stream. And then every other Saturday is called the Dam Challenge Stream. So we actually, on that, is it's an ongoing map making contest. Uh, the current Dam Challenge is dinner time. If you want to participate, you make a map of any shape or size using dinner time as inspiration. Submit it to the Dam Challenge channel in our Discord. Uh, before end of day on the 12th, wherever you're located, your time zone. And uh, on Saturday the 13th, I, I will showcase the winning map and a bunch of runner-up maps. Anyway, so round rooms, diagonal rooms, rooms of pretty much any shape you want will be available in upcoming updates. So you said a map called Spa? Is that like short for spaghetti? Like a spaghetti day? Do you see it here? Oh, there it is. I see it. Oh, that one's a 10 by 10. Nice. Temple purity bathing and vapors to commune with the aquatic deities. I hear a really loud noise outside my house. I'm just going to investigate really quick. Oh, wow, that's cool. I like what you did. Very smart way to get steam by using the geyser. Like a little bathhouse. What are these uh, here? These little areas. Doorways in. Nice. I just saw it's like a dock or something. Or a, like a, a catwalk or something over the water. Interesting. Very cool. I like it. I really like how you combined the natural with the non- by cutting out a section of the room, which is very cool. So if you look under here, there's like a, oh, <laughs> that's cool. You put it on like a, ah, I see what you did there. There's a section of room with water in it, right? And it just looks like this is all like hot water, probably like a natural hot water spring, you know, adjacent to maybe some sort of volcanic activity. Man, I used to love hot springs when I was a kid, and now I'm terrified of them. Because of that uh, weird amoeba thing you can pretty much find in almost any hot spring in America now. It's like uh, Najiri Faleri or something like that. Hello, Freedy. Appreciate you being here. Welcome, and you're the first chatter from Trovo, actually. Um, we are uh, multi-streaming simultaneously across many different platforms at the moment. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Trovo, obviously, Kick, Twitter. Um, my name is Mac. I'm the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. This is the product you see in front of you, this map-making program. And uh, if you're interested, we do have a Discord um, give me just one moment. I'll get the link. Drop it in chat for you. Say, Sue, are you back, by the way? But you're more than welcome to join our uh, public Discord. And, uh... Yeah, we do have it for the Twitch side, but I got to figure out how to make a bot for Restream in general for all different sites. 
It's it's probably, you know, I don't like to question whether or not they're legitimate. It is kind of a an interesting first statement to say the least, like they want me to just add them. But anyway, This in first person is great. Looks great. By the way, Morgrim, did I answer your question to your satisfaction earlier? Did I give you a few ideas of how to make an underwater map or how to address it currently? Roan, I really like it. The steam is great. You did a great job setting up the effects. The, uh, the geyser in the center of the room is a great centerpiece. The color, the lighting, it's, it's a very nice. I like it indeed. So is this just a, like a bathhouse in the city that you run a campaign for? Oh, was this a submission for 10 by 10? So the 10 by 10 challenge ended a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, in order to submit, your map has to be posted in the damn challenge. Oh, you were late. Got you. Got you. Well, I'm glad I still got to see it. It's really good. A good, powerful piece for a 10 by 10. Honestly, I love the 10 by 10 challenge because it showed how much we could pack in a small space. It really is amazing. Yeah, make sure you, um, I mean, honestly, so when you share it on the workshop, make sure in the, in the description somewhere you put... The name of the challenge, so ten, like 10 by 10 damn challenge. So when I search, I find it. And then also in Discord, you need to share the link of the map from Steam Workshop and the damn file. And just like a short description. But that way, everyone in Discord can see it and look at it. I like everyone to uplift each other. And our community is so great. Like, uh, you know, the damn challenge participants in particular will like always uplift each other and be really wholesome and uh, share feedback and... You know, love just, like, making each other, like, I don't know. You guys are rock stars to each other is basically how I see it. You are all a really, really humble and wholesome to each other. You're, like, excellent to each other, as Bill and Ted would say. Is the uh, chat easier to read today on the stream feed? I was a little concerned. Uh, you know, Seisu brought it up that it might be hard to read, and so we played around with it. This is a beautiful map, though. Very beautiful. Let's go back to the uh, the project today, though. Unfortunately, I gotta I gotta adjourn from here and go to the damn challenge gallery and put some of those images in. Excuse me, my VA is crashing, it looks like. Hopefully it loads. Most excellent. Station. Nah, honestly, if your DA ever, like, is running slow or, like, lags out or you get the little circle or maybe Windows brings up a, a message that's like, hey, click wait. Or do you want to close or do you want to wait? You know, always click wait. Just wait. It, it DA, especially depending on the size of map and the amount of assets in it, it's got to preload all that before it loads up. So it just takes a minute sometimes. So depending on the last map you had open or how many assets you have downloaded from the workshop, it could take a while. Yeah, just let it go. Let it go. <laughs> really? I'm assuming it's offloading tons of, like, third-party assets you've gotten from uh, Forgotten Adventures. I, you know, I never uh, planned to quit this amazing job. <laughs> More or less, I'm just a, an encapsulated entertainer that may or may not be good at any aspect of it. <laughs> I 
I, uh, honestly, I, um... Hey, welcome, Lord Keep on. Wow, we got 100 messages today with Restream. Not bad. So I've been using this new tool called Restream. It's not new on the market. It's, been, it's new to me. It's been on the market for a while, but it allows you to multi-stream to a bunch of different sites. So I've been streaming on Twitch nonstop for like a couple years for Dungeon Alchemist. But now we can expand that horizon to more parts of our community. We've probably got people here from Facebook. We've got people here uh, from Twitter. We got people here from YouTube. Raise of hands. Maybe uh, do you want to say hello in chat if you're watching from one of those platforms? We'd love to welcome you. And in, in, I encourage you to join in the discussion. However, you are more than welcome to lurk and just chill out. Uh, and you know, you don't have to participate at all in that way. It's up to you however you want to be a part of these streams. That's the cool thing. But I just wanted to let you know that we don't bite. We're very, very warm and inviting. Lurk harder! <laughs> okay, so wizard mind retreat. Put in the first bit. We'll do that one as the centerpiece. Not a whole lot of map here to work with, so. Next. We're gonna put up one of those spherical chests. Let's disable collisions so we can get ahead of this. I'm gonna shrink this bad boy down. Kind of put it in the center of that. Rotate it. Want to make sure the lock or handle, I guess. Yeah, that's the handle that it opens from, right? Oh, it's the other side. So that's the hinge. Okay. Get rid of the treasure. Close it. And then it was surrounded with some neat planets, like a moon, right? But they were shrunk. Oh man, this thing is. Take this bad boy down. Because I've disabled collisions, you can shrink objects way low, smaller than their normal sizes or way past their normal sizes. Well, welcome, Tim. Uh, you were at Rincon in the Netherlands. A uh, guy there showed me this and I'm hooked. Now getting all the info for when I buy it next month. Well, you are tuning into the best place. This is the official Dungeon Alchemist stream. My name is Mac. I'm the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. Uh, if you have any questions related to Dungeon Alchemist, let me know. And we're showing all sorts of cool building tips and tricks today during our stream, which is called Mapmaker Monday. So every Monday I throw a stream and build live so people can watch and learn and ask questions in AMA format, which means ask me anything. But what I just did here is I turned off collisions in the object panel. That pretty much opens hacking mode for Dungeon Alchemist's objects. It allows you to scale objects way huge, way small. It allows you to raise them up and down. So essentially you have much more control over the object than you would normally. Um, and... While collisions are off, you can also put objects inside of each other and merge them together, creating new and unique objects that look completely different. Now this, this chest had like some celestial bodies orbiting around it like this. So I'm just gonna put a couple to kind of illustrate what it was doing, right? Shrink that one. Um, most of the room's already decorated now. We put the paintings and the images. I'm going to put another custom decoration in this uh, display case, which I was going to put a book. And there's all these books that were open. I think this tome, this wizard's tome, is appropriate. Because it, like, glows. Anyway, and, and now it's protected behind a display case. I really like that. So now this room is done. 
prompting me to save because you want to save often and if you don't save often you're probably going to lose a map that you worked really hard on because uh, ultimately dungeon alchemist is very resource intensive and sometimes things can crash or lag out and maybe you forget to save and you close the map or close da or your computer just crashed on its own you definitely want to save often um, and some news with that, our next update will incorporate an autosave feature, which will take a lot of the guesswork out of, you know, saving. So you can save, and there's a hotkey for saving, Control S. You can also save as, which allows you to save an offshoot of the map. So you could say, save as this timestamp, and have many incremental saves, as Zach just suggested. And when our update launches, you'll have the option to set a time frame where you'll have an autosave created. So once you have a master save of the map, it'll create an auto save of the map in tandem every interval you have it set at. So if it's five minutes or, you know, 20, uh, 15, 20, 30 minutes, an hour, it will auto save on that increment. And when it does save, it creates a new save adjacent in the same folder where the existing master save is. And it will say, uh, you know, the same file name, auto save timestamp. And every five minutes or 30 minutes, whatever your increment is, it will replace it. So it just writes over it with a new one, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, moving on. Hey, welcome back, my friend. It's so I'm so glad you're here. So I'm just going to start calling you Orange Space Monkey to get going, because obviously you went by a different name before. But this will make it easier for me to just remember your new name going forward. Sound good? Or OSM. <laughs> You'd use Git? I don't even understand how to use Git. It's so confusing to me. It is, uh, it's, it like doesn't make sense to me. But I would love to learn it and understand how Git repositories work. One time I was like trying to understand how a Git re repository worked and there was a, like a web-based app running from it. And, like, I accidentally messed up the repository by looking at the code. See, and then the developer wrote me. He's like, hey, why'd you do that? And I was like, I didn't even know I did it. I'm really new. He's like, oh, it's a simple mistake. No worries. See, I'm not the developer. I don't write code. I'm the community manager. I'm uh, I'm the, the person who is not shy about talking about Dungeon Alchemist and sitting in front of the camera all day. And posting content and creating content. So I, I may I mainly just showcase amazing content from our community and teach people how to use DA. <laughs> but I do want to learn how to use GitHub to a degree, just mainly because I do think it's an interesting tool for storage and other stuff. You know, and if I were to develop an app, probably go there or a game or something. I do have ideas for games, but, like, I always get flustered because I have no idea how to address them, and I don't have enough time to learn how to make it. So I'm, like, in this, like, limbo between where I have an idea, but I don't know how to manifest it into the real world. Part of me, like, feels like maybe... I should write these ideas down, really solidify them, and, like, put a pitch deck together and, like, maybe talk to Wim and Carl about it because they obviously have success in creating a successful piece of software. But I could also, you know, talk to them as maybe mentors and whatnot, too. Anyway, moving on from that. I, uh, I'm very excited to finish this map because I've been working on it for like three months and we're getting very close, like very close. There's only like five or six rooms left. Okay, I need to unsub from this one because that one was not a damn chance. winner, though it was beautiful. Okay, that one also, I want to make sure I don't accidentally add the wrong maps into the damn challenge gallery. Still, very beautiful map, Roan. Thank you for sharing. Make sure you enter on time next time so we can try and get you a win. Oh, 
I'm sure. Yeah, it needs to be mostly like finalized and kind of like you have like art and like oh, a bunch of stuff already going for it. You know what I mean? Okay, so we just did this one. That means we've just got one row of maps left. Five maps. So I think I'm going to do this uh, key to the heart one next. Just a quick reminder to all the new viewers here across the various platforms, if you have any questions related to Dungeon Alchemist, feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for. I am like a database of Dungeon Alchemist knowledge, and our community is like a hive mind that also likes to share their expertise. I wish I knew. Honestly, Wim won't even tell me what the Easter eggs are. Because he's too afraid I'll accidentally leak them. Coward! <laughs> so... So there's a portal bridging two realms, right? And this realm here is where the key to, uh, if I remember correctly, let me read the description. Stories turned out to be real. One really can find the key, the divine key to the goddess heart. You only need to climb to the top of Mount Very High Up, perform a ritual and open the portal, and then the brave the domain of the ancients. Not to mention make it back out alive. Anything for love. Last message received from Scholar Gwyn. Vertically, verticality and dangers abound. Journey into the realm of the key of the heart. So, you've got these cool, like, stone platforms here, or gem platforms that you can traverse across. There's a bit of verticality in the map there. Like jumping up and down and climbing and whatnot. Also areas up into here. And then there's the key which I'm assuming unlocks something to the heart or accesses it or allows you to take it. But it's a good represented top-down. Looks very good in top-down. I I mean, lava does... Lava's hot. So, I mean, depending on how much HP and your, uh, your rule for fire damage, then yes, you might die. The floor is, in fact, lava. Hey, Garfield, welcome back. Welcome back, my man. How you doing? Do you hate Mondays? I gotta ask you, because it is a Monday and your name's Garfield, so let's let's get real. Who doesn't like MacGuffins? What did uh, Spider-Man call it? In uh, he what he called his MacGuffin in uh, that uh, the animated one they did a few years ago, Into the Spider Verse, the first one. A booger, isn't that what he called it? He called it a booger because you you need it but you can't get rid you 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 want to get rid of it but you can't and you need it <laughs> like something like that. Isn't that what he called his flash drive or something like that? Or a goober. It's like you need this thing, but you can't, and you don't, you want to get rid of it, but you can't because it's stuck to you, you know? I think that was the reasoning there. 
So you need this thing to for beating the boss, but it's like may not be good to have it because it's cursed or what other reason, you know? Or it attracts a lot of attention to you. I think it was Goober. The Goober. Okay, so I just exported a top-down map. Tim Goad asks, and he asks from Facebook, he says, Okay, so noob question. We play with the TV on a table. With DA, you make the map, and then you'll need to load it into a program to show it to the players. Will you still be able to zoom in from different positions? So I have some amazing news for, me, for you, my friend. You can actually use Dungeon Alchemist to facilitate map play in person on a TV tabletop to a degree. Or you can just export animated maps like video files that have a grid on them. So Dungeon Alchemist has a lot of different settings, uh, including grid options. This map probably isn't the best because it's, uh, it's raised up and half the grid is buried under all this stuff. But if we show you another map after I take some pictures, if you give me just two minutes to take some shots in here, we'll open up a new map and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So Dungeon Alchemist has some tools to facilitate TV tabletop or uh, projector tabletop play. Um, and I'll show you that. Let's see. We've got a key. I think the heart and the key should be the items. The statue is awesome, but I've already used that in another room. So I think these ones would be great. Right? I guess I could do the statue holding the key and that would make it more iconic. I'll do that. Now, I need more pictures. So I think this one with the statue looks really cool. I'm going to raise this camera up. Get a cinematic shot. Now, Tim, you can take cinematic shots using the uh, the cinematic camera that we offer. And you can use those for handouts to either print and give to your players. Or you can display them on the TV temporarily to give them, you know, a little theater of the mind shot. You can also um, export in top down as a still image or a video. Um, and that can be set on your TV screen. So you could just have a folder full of like JPEGs or like play a slideshow one after another. Or you can do the same thing with video as a playlist and just switch from scene to scene and have a loop of the video map playing each one. Um, now, when you're playing with a TV tabletop, you can put your tokens right on top of the TV or you can use tokens within DA. We offer in a token assortment. You can also import custom tokens from Hero Forge or using the Asset Importer, uh, which is a tool that allows you to import custom 3D models into your build. One moment. There's picture two. I'm going to get a, one of this portal because it looks dope. I think something like this with a first person token is the way to go. So I'm going to drop a token out here so I can look up at the scope of the portal, which is massive. Turn off collisions because this token is here. Click the icon here and look around in the token purview. And if you see it from this perspective, it is just massive. Really got to get that shot. Hey, Jacob. How you doing? Okay, so now we've got the screenshots from this map that I'm going to incorporate into another map. But Tim wants to know how to display maps on a TV tabletop. So I'm going to open one of my favorite maps. It's one of my maps, and you may have seen it on the workshop. This map is called the Dwarven Prospector's Mine Remastered. It's the second version of a map. It's just an updated, bigger, better map in every way. And this map is ideal for showcasing TV tabletop play because I've actually played it on TV tabletop, so I'll show you. Now, there are tools that allow you to facilitate gameplay, but when you're playing in person, a lot of people prefer to roll their own dice. They prefer to facilitate rules themselves, right? So, Tim, would you prefer that you do rolls and rules yourself or and you facilitate all that on your table? Or would you prefer that there is a third party application doing all the math and managing hit points and inventories and dice rolls and stuff like that? Now, depending on your answer can determine how we, det you know, how I answer. So we'll wait for Tim to respond. There's Real dice and own rules. That makes sense. Because in person, people like playing with their math rocks. They like the clicky clacks. 
And, you know, you could use a third-party tool like Foundry, which is called a virtual tabletop, or Roll20, and have that display the maps on your TV. But you're going to need a lot more than a simple computer just to play the map, and you're going to need to learn that software, and your players are going to need to learn how to play on it and understand it to a degree. So if you just want to play with your maps on a TV tabletop and enjoy the view, first things first, I'm going to turn on this grid. Notice this grid. This grid is actually very bright, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. You can adjust the transparency. You can set the grid to be hex instead of square if you prefer. You can change the color of the grid to match a better map. Maybe, you know, green is more ideal in this environment or a red. Oh, Christy, yeah, no. Streaming first-person versions of the map to your players in Discord is like a, a, an ace DM move. And it's such a great immersion tool because your players get to experience this environment for the first time in for through their eyes. They're always playing in top-down, right? But now we always talk about their abilities. They can cast this spell, they can jump this high or fly, but we never let them see through their own eyes. That's like a core human experience, right? So allowing them to see this from this level allows players who immerse themselves visually much better. You know, typically we give them the top down and they kind of just have to figure it out from there. So this map is great for facilitating top down TV tabletop play. You can export this map and it would be animated with all the lava and the drills and the various smoke and whatnot and the lighting. And what I would do in your place is essentially have the map playing and then just cover portions of it with like a sheet or construction paper. And then as they move through the mine, you would reveal the mine. Now there are tools that help facilitate in-person play. There's one called Dynamic Dungeons. And Dynamic Dungeons allows you to stage your, your maps as scenes and even do like Fog of War in person. So there are ways to facilitate things like that and you know, reveal the map digitally but it, it's just a matter of preference honestly dungeon alchemist is it's a map maker and immersion tool because of the immersion tools we offer it does facilitate in-person play pretty well for printed maps map mats or tv tabletops so we, you know, we have the grid, we have the tokens that you can add in, so you can place tokens if you want, or you can just use a real token on top of your TV with the grid underneath. Does that make sense? Owlbear is a great one. Yeah, Owlbear is awesome. Above VTT are also great VTT tools that are free, and they allow you to do that kind of like fog of war stuff. But I mean, if you're playing in person, and you're rolling your dice yourselves and you're managing all your rolls yourselves, playing in DEA is amazing because it's immersion level 50 and your players could be like, what is this down here? And you could just zoom in and take a closer look for their inspection. Like maybe they they had a you know really good investigation check and you let them see very closely what it is, right? <laughs> um, there are DMs that will do like flyovers of maps like this and show a video. And they'll be like, your familiar flew through and got you a basic layout of the uh, the thing. So you kind of get an idea of what it looks like. You know, in a quick fly through of the map at an angle or something like that. Anyway, there's a bunch of ways to facilitate TV tabletop play. So Tim, at some point we do plan to add some VTT light features like Fog of War, limited dice rolling and stuff like that. But that will likely be after we leave early access or near the end of our life cycle. Um, or I'm near the end of our Kickstarter life cycle. Hey, Christy, thank you for stopping in. I appreciate you. We'll talk to you later. Don't get in trouble at work, okay? Work is important. You got to eat. You got to pay your bills. Well, the thing about once we leave the end of our early access, then we'll start releasing... You know, quality of life patches to fix and fine tune things, uh, you know, uh, feature updates and updates to expand our library of VTTs we offer support for. Additionally, the devs have stated that they want to 
offer expansions that are optional that go above and beyond the fantasy aesthetic. Like right now, Dungeon Alchemist pretty much is fantasy, maybe some light, you know, steampunk, Eberron, maybe early Western, you can get away with pretty easily. Unless you start downloading assets from the workshop to fill in gaps, it's really hard to get out of those aesthetics. Now I've seen modern, I've seen Fallout, I've seen sci-fi, I've seen spaceships, I've seen Star Wars, all done with Dungeon Alchemist thanks to the addition of the Steam Workshop assets and the asset importer. Uh, the asset importer allows you to import like custom tokens and models so you can go into different, you know, whatever. And Tim, that can help you too. You could import your player's custom tokens and use them digitally instead of on an acrylic over the top of the screen. But where they play in person, they may still want a physical token. You know, people like the physical aspects usually when they play in person. That's why they like the dice and managing all those things themselves. The TV just facilitates faster map play and more immersive maps, right? <clears throat> no worries, Seisu. You all right, my friend? I, I had everything under control. Honestly, I'm so happy that we're getting a good turnout across the board right now. I mean, there's like a handful of viewers on YouTube. There's a handful of viewers on Facebook. And uh, we've got our normal like supporting group from Twitch. So the videos, like, uh, imagine, Tim, you could do, like, a walk into an area or a flyover, and maybe one of your players has a familiar that they use a lot to scout the area, or one of them does invisibility or something. Then they could have, like, a quick video uh, that they could watch once or twice that you give them to watch privately as a handout. You could take screenshots of certain areas of a map to be, like, extra immersive. Just hop into the camera, take some shots, save it, give it as a handout to your players. Hey, I'm here for you. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. By the way, this map is available on the workshop to anyone looking for a cool mine. I put a lot of love into this map and I put I pulled out all the stops using every trick available in my my tool belt at the time to make this map as immersive as possible. Um, you know, we've got endless pits and cool minecart tracks looping around and um it is what it's probably the map I'm most proud of making if I had to had to say Got a red dragon's lair hiding out here in the back Oh you're back dang Okay so let's go back to Map Maker Monday. Opening and building. Get back to my damn, ch uh, damn challenge gallery, right? So this map I've been making on the stream for the last couple of months is essentially a living museum slash gallery to, as a tribute to all the winners of our ongoing map making contest here on Twitch every other Saturday called the Dam Challenge. You may see next to me, uh, this way, sorry. It says current Dam Challenge dinner time. If you want to participate in the Dam Challenge, you make a map of any shape or size using dinner time as inspiration. You submit it in our Discord. Uh, can you drop the Discord link really quickly? Stay soon. At least so it'll be up on chat. And I will drop it to YouTube and to Facebook. There we have links for everyone. Sorry for the link spam, but I wanted to make sure it gets across the board. I was playing with the bot a little bit yesterday. I think I can make commands like this that should work okay. So that's good. Um, we'll get those fine tuned before hopefully the next stream. Uh, the next damn stream, at least. But uh, this map here is a, like a museum. And every room is a tribute to a map that won a damn challenge. So there's like a top down of the map, images of the map from various angles, items from the map that are kind of iconic. And then when all's said and done, the outside will have a QR code link to the map on Steam Workshop, the name of the map, and the creator, recognizing their hard work. So there's going to be 40 plus rooms with all of these, these things in them. 
It's gonna get a little intense. The key of the heart. Key to the heart. So now I just inserted custom images into these paintings. The majority of paintings, paper, documents, anything with like a label on it, you can probably change it, signs, etc. You can put custom imagery into these spaces if you wish. Now, I'm going to put the heart in here. Heart shape box. got this cool hand that was holding it so rotate it Oop, whoops click the wrong part shrink that bad boy down to like a reasonable size and I'm gonna just tuck it in there like that That looks pretty cool. Next, I'm gonna do the tipped statue with the key in the hand. E Was the key custom? I'm starting to feel like it was like a key with like a gem on it. Yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> no, the portal will be too much. I'd have to like tuck it in here somewhere and it wouldn't fit right scaling. I appreciate the suggestion though, Asmodeus. How are you doing, buddy? I usually am more trying to just capture like an item, not necessarily the aesthetic, like the entire mood. So at the moment, realistically, all I'm trying to do is just try and capture the object feel. Putting all the map around it would be problematic, to say the least. I think that looks good enough. Oh no, at this angle it looks very scuffed. Okay. So we've got the statue and the heart. And this room, aside from its front plaque, is done, but I do those uh, offline. My wife helps me with those. We just pop them out really quick. So if you look at all the previous maps, I just take a little, like an object from each one as kind of a representation so people could kind of get a 3D view of the map. Uh-oh, did I not save with that abstract? I did not. Darn it. Okay, I'm going to hurry and add that ab abstract back.
Okay. Save. That'll save what's done in this room and the previous room. Gonna save again. Hey, old man Garrix, how are you? Save early, save often. Very, very smart. One is none, two is one, three is two. Wanna have backups. Okay, so we did clean Hazy's map. It's done. How you doing, Garrus? And Remy, how are you? Okay, so I think it goes Riftward Quay, Fossil Temple, Necropolis District, Subaquatic Temple. This map is just absolutely beautiful. Watchtower, are you here? Hey, Sailor Yugoth. Honestly, where I live, the eclipse probably won't really be visible or like, like at least optimally visible. I've just decided, meh. We can look at the sun in DA and say we saw the eclipse. Well, that's nice. So, um, I just saw your message in Discord, uh, Space Monkey, about you're trying to make the most detailed village as possible. You need to see some of the stuff that's on the workshop now, because like village uh, map making has gone to a whole new level now that you can download assets from the workshop, um, because there's like tons of home shapes and prefabs that you can fit things in and make it look all sorts of neat and unique and like very custom. Does that make sense? There's some very, very cool ones up there that you should check out. I think it's funny that like every other moon in our solar system has a name, like a unique name, but our moon is just moon. <laughs> uh oh, did DA just crash? Like they just got a little lazy with that one. Right? I propose we name her Luna. So this map here is stationed essentially on the edge. Hey, Aconite, welcome back, brother. On the edge of, uh, like, the Astral Sea. And this is like the last bastion of any civilization or anything before you head out. The Riftward Quay is a tavern, an inn, and a trading center, essentially. <laughs> it's a very beautiful map. These were maps from, these were assets from the workshop. That particular set is, uh, you go to Browse Assets and go to Collections. There's a collection of uh, these modular medieval village. That's pretty much all that is there. Right, Christy? It's like they got a little lazy when they were naming our planet and our uh, our moon. They're just like, that's a moon. That's moon. Earth, uh, let's, let's just call it as this is after soil. Earth. It was the guy who named appliances 
who was working there that day. Have you ever noticed how appliances are pretty much just named after the thing they do? I, re I really like to thank uh, Mitch Hedberg for pointing this out, Rip. You just say the... Th that would be the best job ever. You just say the thing it does and you add er. Well, this, this thing refrigerates. That's a refrigerator. Blend er. That's it. I'm going on break. <laughs> Trying to get a really good shot here. Let's do... Something like that. What did it do? Yeah, I have it on pretty high um, for, or like for auto mod, just because you know we're a brand and I don't want anything to to risk anything getting snuck through. Typically, so it will just find words that it's worried about and definitely say something about it. You know. Anyway, let's get a couple more pictures here. Oh, wait, that wasn't the top down I just did, huh? I need to rename that file. That was like number one. Let's go to export. We'll get a top down. <clears throat> I think the auto mod just grabbed it, but you know. Need to pick a couple of items. I guess I could just use like one of these boats. This one's a very custom build, so that will take me a while to make, so I don't want to do that. That one there, not so much. Let's just download. Maybe the airship is in my stuff. That asset could look pretty cool, too. I'm trying to decide which ones would look cool in this. Now, this is where therein lies the problem with a build with so many beautiful custom assets. It uh, makes it problematic when you want to pick one, right? <laughs> Something in the airship and maybe this like whirlpool.
and to a degree I've been trying to avoid grabbing assets from the workshop for this build, but when there's so many in a build, it's like, well, kind of have to do it. <sighs> you know, Space Monkey, I do like that idea. I've pitched the idea of a D&D game hosted on here before. And at the time, I think the devs just weren't interested in it or they felt like it was not a good use of my my community management time, you know, for... And that's not to say it's a bad idea. It's just at the time, there was more things to focus on. And I think, you know, we're kind of getting to the point where Dungeon Alchemist could potentially also almost facilitate a game itself within it. So I do think that uh, as we get closer and closer to like a VTT light, uh, the prospect of a game, you know, in our stream is definitely likely. That or, you know, a campaign using all DA maps or, you know, one shots or something like that would definitely make, it would be more probable. Damgens and dragons. <laughs> I always kind of thought um, a name for my my player group or player character group would be the D and Dweebs. Oh, you might, Dirty Rollers. How are you doing, buddy? How have you been, friend? When did Chase say something? Hold on. I missed some chat here. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Okay, so Chase said, how would a map like that export to Foundry if you wanted players to go inside? So it would just be top-down in Foundry. You wouldn't be 3D in Foundry. Our maps export in a top-down for, for services like Foundry. There is no 3D export, and there will never be, unfortunately. Next, uh, Garfield asks, Facility Game and DA would be literally game-changing for all of D&D. It would make it so much more accessible and engaging for new and young players. I agree. The level of interactivity for visual, you know, and like people who like to like actually like investigate and play with things, it's a whole new level. It borderlines like video game interactivity. I just think that it's it's kind of, you know, kind of not there yet. Now, granted, uh, you can always get in and like take screenshots in like first person or using our cinematic camera to use as handouts in Foundry or I've actually played in a game where the DM would stream first person through Discord and they'd follow along wherever the players were. So if the player was in this room, they would show this room from first person and then the player could say, hey, could you take a clo closer look at the document on that pedestal? And then we'd go look at it. The first person view would go look at it. Or, hey, can you investigate this case? And then we'd roll for investigation. The DM would say, oh, you, you found this inside. You know what I mean? So it gives you a lot more immersion. Um opportunities if anything dungeon alchemist is a map making tool first but it's an immersion tool second and that immersion capability is where you have the opportunity to really dive in and uh showcase your map with the tools the camera tools available the first person mode the cinematic modes etc i mean people have made landing pages in dungeon alchemist cut scenes long rest scenes chase scenes all sorts of stuff sky's the limit the only the only limiter here is how much effort you're willing to put in to do it. Well, you can always place freestanding walls on top of them. 
So you have freestanding walls. Every single wall type is available as a freestanding. So let's just assume that this is the exact same wall here. Let's turn collisions off. Raise it up to the next level. Get it up to where it's the right height. Oh, well, if you hold control, it also snaps. Then you just hit shift and start throwing in a second floor. I mean, that's pretty easy, quick way to add a second floor. Honestly, I don't think I've ever heard a player complain about the first first, first person not or seeing the sky or that the sky is blacked out. I've not heard of one DM saying their player complained about that. But I mean, that I, I can understand why it, some people are averse to using the first person mode. I mean, if you're clever, you don't have to look above that line and you can also set rooms to black out the sky so it's just an immersion ceiling. There's no daylight or anything like that. But you could always just kind of be at this level looking at it from this height. So it very, very rarely breaks above that. I, I don't know. I've never heard of a player looking at a map and being like, oh, this looks awful. Or, oh, what what's going on with that? Because they're more focused on the interactivity and the playing. They're not focused on the, you know, the minutia of the interact of the uh, like immersion. You know what I mean? They're there to kick butt and and take names. They're not there to like rag on you for your map being 72 DPI or a ceiling not being present. I have played on quite a few tables. I've spoken to quite a few DMs. I have only heard of like maybe one time a player complaining about like this right here and they more just asked it wasn't a complaint they were just like what's going on with the ceiling well because there is no ceiling for a top-down map it just blacks out the sky when you're in first person now there are ceilings on the workshop you can go onto the workshop download hundreds of roofs to your heart's content And you can place these roofs on top of these buildings and structures. So you can place a roof. Oh my gosh. Oh, chow. Every time. Every time. <laughs> then you go to multi-story. There's really not a true like multi-story support VTT out there that is stock. I did hear that maybe the levels module will be incorporated in the next Foundry update as a stock feature, which would give us a whole lot more motivation to start developing a feature to incorporate multi-level into Foundry because there's actually a stock element to do it. Currently, the only way we would do it is just slices. We would just slice a map and then this slice is map A, map B, maps. each floor is a new map and there would be a new scene. That's really the only way you could do it with the existing architecture across most VTTs. I know you're messing with me. I know you're messing with me, to be honest with you. I know you're trolling. So I, I know you're just getting my goat, and I'm just uh, alerting the community to the general reasoning. But I would say it's probably in the next two to three updates that multi-floor and roofing will be addressed. They wanted to get, you know, pretty much buildings of any shape squared away before, and the ability to rotate a building and raise it up and down before they started, you know, focusing on multi-floor, which I think it's a good foundational step to get that right. You'd want to be able to shape the building to whatever you wanted before you focused on the next floor, right? I'm glad you got that working, Christy. It, it was probably like a big download session, huh? Okay, raise of hands. Who plays in person? I just want a quick raise of hands in chat. Let me know if you play in person. Do you, If you play in person, do you play with printed maps or a TV tabletop? Let me know. Or are you playing... Uh, let's, let's hear how you play in person. So some good representation there of in-person play. 
Uh, you know, maybe you could, I mean, if you don't feel like you're ever going to play in person again, maybe you could donate it to like a boys and girls club or a school. Um, you know, though they are always getting into D and D and tabletop gaming, and I'm sure they would love a donation of minis and maps and stuff like that. If you're not using them. Speaking of maps in person map, y'all want to see something cool? I know you do. This is a massive mat. This is a neoprene mat from our partner, Kraken War Games. Anyone who owns a copy of Dungeon Alchemist can put a map and sh get it shipped and printed and shipped from Kraken War Games. Things are waterproof, scratch resistant, they'll last a lifetime. So if you do like a really important map that you use a lot, like a city or a tavern or something, you could be using this map weekly in in session play. Duncan MacGyver, hey, did you steal my name? Because I go by Mac around these parts. I'm just kidding. You can barely hear me because the mic's below me and I have like a noise filter that was... They vary based on size. I think this one was like 35 euro and this one's like three feet by three feet. It is massive. The other one I have was like 75 euro, but it's like five feet tall by four feet wide or something like that. The, the, the prices. You're the original. I don't know. Richard Dean Anderson would, would argue with that. Richard Dean Anderson would ar argue with that. I'm just kidding. But uh, Duncan, welcome. My name is Mac. I go by Mac. That's actually a nickname I've had since I was a small boy. Uh, my dad and I used to watch MacGyver religiously, and I would always pretend to be MacGyver by tinkering with stuff. So he'd take me to like the junkyard to get electronics and let me break stuff apart and play with it. But I actually started getting pretty good at things. So I started learning how to do things. <laughs> I know, we're joking. We're I'm just joking. Richard Dean Anderson is also in stargate <laughs> it's the same guy <laughs> you are funny bane how are you doing buddy welcome back by the way okay so i need to put some items in here this is zeppelin balloon i think could be a good one Let's put this on this display pedestal here. Pedal stool. I did not watch Junkyard Wars. What's it about? But uh, yeah, uh, Duncan MacGyver, welcome to the stream. And sorry I was giving you a hard time. I just saw your name and I had to jump into it. But I'm Angus MacGyver, if you will. I'm just kidding. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Are you all excited for the eclipse? I'm like, eh. It's it's a it's it's just a celestial body kind of covering up another celestial body. If anything, they're 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 being more like Oh, that sounds really cool. So it's kind of like basically if the guys from like uh Mythbusters were let loose and just like build things to fight each other with or something. I 
Honestly, Caillou, I would say that after the pandemic, it kind of was, it used to be mostly in-person play was the main for tabletop gaming, but the pandemic pushed a major change in mindset and facilitated a huge, like, kind of like a, what, what, what would they call it? A, an arms race between all these different companies making products. We're in that arms race ourselves. Dungeon Alchemist is one of the many map makers out there that kind of were that released right on the heels of the pandemic. And it was the perfect timing. Companies like Roll20 and Foundry and Fantasy Grounds really got a foothold in the market where they were kind of like outliers and not as, I mean, Roll20 was pretty big, don't get me wrong, but they blew up during the pandemic. And now a lot of people play using a VTT online or even in person. So I would say that, uh, You know, that realistically that, that arms race kind of kicked off just before the pandemic, just and just into it, because it's like the digital modern era, people were looking for online play, but it pushed it into the forefront, onto the stage. Everyone wanted it immediately, instead of it was like a niche thing. Exactly. Because of so much demand and users on online exclusively almost, and people working from home now almost exclusively. Uh, like I work from home only, you know, I don't, I don't even go to grocery stores anymore, guys. I like literally just curbside pick up all my groceries. I'm a kind of a homebody, if I'm being honest with you. But I love online play for that reason. That being said, I do think there's a degree of interactivity and sort of camaraderie that happens with in-person play that can't be facilitated quite as well in online play. Unless you already know each other in person. Because I, I do think that it's easier for people in online games to ghost each other or like have disagreements because they don't know each other in person as many, as often. You know what I mean? So you'll read about like drama on Reddit in D&D games. Most of those games are in person are not in person games. They're like they're online games. Where they have a problem with one person's mic or their attitude towards things or their showboating or whatever, you know. Bane, that's awesome. And um, you know, you found a great crossover between the two where you get the best of both worlds. You can facilitate your game and, you know, rules and roles and maps with a digital space that allows it to be more fluid and immersive, uh, quick, um, and, like, takes care of a lot of the, the math and, you know, managing the minutia, you know? So how many people play with a VTT? We asked how many people play in person. Let's, how many raise of hands play with a VTT? And if you play with a VTT, which one do you use? While we're doing that, I'm going to go grab the other map. Anyone want to see another big map? I got to ask, though, for those that are VTT now, were you in person prior to the pandemic and switched to VTT after the pandemic? Or have you just been strictly online play? So this here is a massive crypt map. This thing is like five and a half, six feet tall. Look at this thing. It's as tall as I am. Hey Dyson, we were looking at your uh, your city map the other day with all the roofing and stuff. That was a really pretty build. Glad I caught you. Yeah, there is some green. I'm gonna fix that. One moment. We are gonna make a new scene really quickly.
One moment. I am going to make this just full screen. And we're going to turn off the green screen for just... Oh man, that made me weird. I'm cropped. Kind of see some of my room behind me, my 3D printers and garbage, but disregard that. I'm going to turn off this chroma key so we can see this map in its glory. Get really close to the camera, so you can see some of the deep here. Back up a little bit, see so more of it. Gosh, there's a chair right behind me. I want to lay this down like one of those uh, mats, like the carpets you had when you were a kid that you would drive your little cars on, your like little matchbox cars, and it looked like a little city. You know what I'm talking about? There and fix this. Anyway, it's huge. I could lay it down in my hallway and like lay next to it and kick my feet like a little kid playing with my matchbox cars. That's what it reminds me of. I don't know if anyone had one of those. You when you like a little kid, it was a little play mat. And it was a carpet and it looked like a city with like roads on it and like structures and you could just drive cars and place toys on it and stuff. I will say this, uh, Morgrim, there's no official support from us for, for Owlbear, um, but Owlbear does have extensions and one of the extensions called Smoke Inspector and the Smoke Inspector extension actually supports our foundry maps. So if you export as a foundry map in Dungeon Alchemist, then you can import it into Owlbear, but you have to have that extension installed. Now, that being said, we do have another uh, a partnership with a free VTT called Above VTT. Uh, Above VTT is, uh, I mean, a really great alternative if you're looking for something free, and it actually links right up to D&D Beyond, so you can link it to any of your monsters or books or any player character sheets that are a part of your campaign there. And it's really nice, for free especially. Hmm. Why am I not finding this map? I wanted to open the map and show it to you. One second. And I can't find it. I, I have some... Oh, you know what? I'll show an image. That'll make it easier to kind of tell the scale. Y'all have seen Seymour. Many of you have seen Seymour on the stream, right? That's how big that mat is. It's huge. So Seymour, he's pretty big. For I mean, I, I you know he's I mean he's obviously like a poodle, but I mean he is a, like the big bad of this entire dungeon here because of how big the map is. That should really give you an idea of how big this map is. Seymour for scale. Ran up to me and then ran away. Thought I was going to chase him. A white luck dragon? Yes. Seymour! 
you got a boulder the size of a small boulder you can put it next to it are you making fun of that uh, police department in colorado that like a boulder the size of a, bo a small boulder was on the side of the road I was my good boy. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? What's that? He is adorable. He's a bit of a stream mascot. If anytime you watch a stream, you're more than likely to bump into Seymour. He'll come in once in a while and say hi. Hang out with us after he gets a bath. He's a cutie. He's a cutie pie. And then I've also got a kitty. A uh, meme named Monty, Montrezar, and he lurks around sometimes too. Seymour is a mama's boy. He'll be gone most of the time. He hangs out with his mom, and then he'll wander in once in a while. A second camera just for him would be just staring at the floor 90% of the time. <laughs> You're only here for Seymour. It makes sense. Honestly, I, I don't blame you. Only three maps left, yo. I need some input on this really quickly. Hey, see you later, Duncan. It was nice to meet you. You're welcome back anytime. By the way, uh, welcome one and all to the new faces here across all our varied platforms as we're multi-streaming now across six platforms simultaneously. We're on Twitch, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. We are on Twitter, we're on Kick, we're on Trovo. So all of these platforms could potentially chime in and say hello. I do appreciate each and every one of you being here, supporting these multi-streams as it's kind of a new community initiative. And we're trying to, you know, allow various members of our community who use different platforms to be able to enjoy the streams. Um, and I'm glad that we are able to do that. Uh, and this will also be great when we get closer to the launch of Magic, because the streams will be multi-streamed across all platforms. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think there's enough yet for a giveaway. You know what, though, Chow? No worries. I get it. I get it. It happens. Um... Sometimes the, I do feel like we're kind of in that that calm before the storm, right? You know, like when uh, it's just so quiet, our community is kind of in that lull where, you know, imagine you're like in between two islands or, uh, you know, two watering holes or oasis in a desert. And it's been like seven months since the last update, right? So I think a lot of people in our community are just idly waiting for that next update. Twitch drops? Oh man, that would be cool, but I don't think we could do something like that. I honestly though, the facilitating a giveaway across six services will be problematic because the bot system with Restream doesn't support it. So I'm honestly kind of considering maybe doing away with stream giveaways unless there's an event. Um, and or trying to maybe do giveaways more centralized in like our discord or on an individual platform itself so there's a focus of a giveaway to that platform exclusively and by that i mean like oh you know i'm actually putting together a giveaway right now that will be hosted in our discord that is to celebrate a year of cardomancer chronicles because we hit a year this last month of uh you know a newspaper every week for a year basically and i've been putting these little uh, newsletters together every week for our community they're full of useful information news uh assets and maps that you can check out um but to celebrate a year of cardomancer i commissioned two artists one of them is a seamstress who made a custom dice tray using material that is dungeon alchemist maps so she actually makes custom dice trays using material that she ordered that is a dungeon alchemist map let me show you that really quickly and these here are essentially that's a tavern that is a fold-up dice tray 
and then you could flip it over and it's got a little uh, forest encounter. So it's like a dice tray and two maps all in one, which I think is incredibly clever and cute. I think it's awesome. A nice little cool way to use a Dungeon Alchemist uh, product. And the other item is a custom commissioned dice set. The dice are Dungeon Alchemist themed. And by that, I mean they will be green, kind of inside, a transparent green. And suspended in them will be a flask, a little, like a, a little vial that is also green and glows with, uh, it reacts to like... Uh, infrared and or no it'll react to sorry the what's the ultraviolet light it'll react to it and like be really green the dice will have kind of cool gr uh, gold um what's the word gold uh flake on the edges and the writing will be green and then it'll have kind of little bubbles inside so it'll look like essentially like there's a floating flask or a little vial inside like our branding and um yeah green like our branding anyway this custom dice set is coming along i've been getting some updates on it the last few days and it's getting very close to completion when it's done and it gets shipped out then i'm going to do some pictures some promotional material maybe a video and then we will announce the giveaway so very soon we'll have a very nice cool giveaway but i do agree with remy 50 for six services seems kind of unfair on our side because it's slanted in the community's favor to get 50 across six services what I might do is just do individual giveaways on each service when they hit 50 of their own. So, you know, that would motivate communities to start coagulating and growing and uh, people to start repeating and, you know, joining the streams more often in their in their preferred community. Um, that being said, I wouldn't want it to just be only Twitch getting giveaways because we do have a little bit more coagulation and growth there. So I'm kind of on the fence about it. I, I'm like I said, I may just do away with them altogether until I can find a way to fairly distribute a giveaway across all six platforms, which is problematic to say the least. But these streams are still a great resource for information. Uh, there still will be, you know, AMA format, and I still will do giveaways. True, Kayo. Uh, I mean, it's crazy how big a, a campaign can get, you know, it's with the tools available. Uh, and I mean, as a DM, you have like almost the whole world at your fingertips. There's tools like ChatGPT to help you with your writing and inspiration for art. There is tools like Dungeon Alchemist for your map making. There's tools to facilitate gameplay, virtual tabletops. I mean, there's all there's dungeon generators loot drop generators i mean all sorts of stuff out there to make your life a lot easier and streamlined as a dm realistically it's just about you building the habit of using it and or uh, facilitating it into your gameplay all right everyone it's 11 there is only three rooms left that we need to do and then pretty much just some finishing touches and this thing will be done I'm going to try and get the labels done in my own time, in my downtime this week. Uh, so those will be done. But uh, next week when we come back, we'll put in three rooms. We will then put in a concession stand and I think a stage back here. I do have a quick question, though, before we wrap up. And people think about this during the week and maybe answer now if you want. Um... There will be some extra rooms, right? And I was thinking it'd be weird to have the galleries in the back corner that you have to walk way far. So I was thinking of putting the the next rooms in the closest, you know, here and here and then maybe one out. And then the rest of the rooms I'm going to put like under construction, like maybe like a sign out front that says under construction and like some uh, caution tape or something like a abstract. That'd be pretty cool. So the rooms that aren't done will just be kind of blocked off and say under construction. And then the rest will be close to the center is my thought. Because that's where the center like channel of traffic would go. And then, like I said, we'll put a stage here next week. Probably some like music, uh, some instruments and a podium and something like that. And then uh, a little concession stand here. Put in some custom like maps that say you are here from a top down. And some little artwork randomly throughout, like I was playing with this earlier. Put this uh, Dungeon Alchemist 
Fata Morgana art on the panel just to see what it looked like. So anyway, I'm going to go back and probably uh, add some areas with some custom DA art in it. It'll be very fun. Thank you everyone for participating in today's Map Maker Monday stream. I hope you learned something today, Only even if it was only one thing about Dungeon Alchemist. I uh, appreciate the continued support in our community initiatives, including streams and uh, giveaways and you know contests, etc. Map Maker Monday is every single Monday. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. So it is from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. PT. Uh, Seisu, can you drop the schedule in chat so people can kind of see that at least, visualize it? Um, I will be back Wednesday for our next stream, which is actually in our Discord. It won't be hosted on any of these platforms because Discord doesn't offer any way to multi-stream. So it is exclusively in our Discord and it is called Office Hours. I'm going to just grab a link for that so... Y'all have that and can check it out. And if you're not a member of our Discord, highly recommend it. It is a great space to be. It is the biggest uh, group of community members we have. You can share maps, get support and ask questions, or just hang out with other DMs and even vibe with GMs and ask them for feedback on your campaign or ideas for, you know, stat blocks and monsters. It's a very wholesome community where pretty much just tons of map makers and GMs vibe with each other and share their experience with DA and get better at map making. So be sure you check out our Discord if you're not a member already. I'm going to drop an invite link really quickly for all platforms. Wednesdays, oops, that was the wrong thing again. Here, Wednesdays uh, stream is a laid back stream where we chill out in Discord on our stage. It's called Dungeon Alchemist HQ Office Hours. And I imagine it kind of like if we had a physical location, like a, a corporate headquarters, where you could drop by and get support or get a tour or get to know the staff. So this stream is like that. You can come hang out, get live support, uh, ask questions, uh, provide feedback and suggestions. I usually set aside a block of about 20, 30 minutes during the stream where we will like take notes and I ask community members for feedback take notes and share it with the devs. So we'll usually pick a feature in DA and I'll be like, what's your thoughts on this? What do you like about it? What you don't like? What would you like to see improved with it? Or how can we improve it? And then I pass that on to the devs. So this is a really great way to get your voice heard and get to, get to know our community as a whole. And uh, sometimes the devs even pop in. I will say just really quickly before I wrap up that we actually have an office hour stream near the end of the month where Wim will be joining us. I'm just going to drop the event link for that so you can RSVP in advance. Wim is the creator of Dungeon Alchemist, and he's our lead artist. Uh, so it's his idea. Dungeon Alchemist came from his brain. And he makes the majority of the assets that you see in DA or fine-tunes the majority of the assets you see in DA. But he will be present as a guest on the 24th of April for two hour, an hour and a half, two hours hanging out. We'll likely share some teasers and leaks from the upcoming Magic update. We'll discuss Magic in depth and you can ask him questions about it and get uh, information and you know insight to the development side of things and the art side of things. So make sure you add that to your calendars or you might miss out. Otherwise, I appreciate you all being here. Thank you everyone that said thanks and goodbye. Here we have uh, Orange Space Monkey. Thank you for coming back. I'm so glad to have you back in our community, brother. Um, hopefully we don't lose you again soon. <laughs> and, uh, let's see here. Atlam, thank you for the love. Uh, Garfield, I appreciate you being here again. Thank you for showing support from the YouTube community. We're only going to grow there, brother. Only going to grow there. I see nothing but upwards for YouTube right now. Um, Caillou, thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Christy, thank you for the love. Everyone, you have been amazing today, whether your map was part of the stream, you know, one of the maps featured in the damn challenge gallery, or we pulled it up, or you were here getting support and just needed guidance. I appreciate each and every one of you, whether you were lurking or actively chatting. Thank you so much for participating in the stream. Uh, again, my name is Mac. I'm the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. This is the official Dungeon Alchemist channel on all these varied platforms. So make sure you hit that follow button if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on any future streams. Otherwise, 
We will see you next time. I give a damn. Back out. Bye. Oops. Hit the wrong button there.